one of the things I love the most about our caregiver book club is to be able to bring you innovative, cutting edge, thought provoking uh, authors, um, and then make sure that you learn from them and also that they're in the book club because it's kind of fun when organizations come through and sweep up all, all the new books because they realize that there's some exciting uh, new uh, editorial and authors are coming together to support family caregivers. One in particular is Dr. Howard Weiner, my next guest. He's a Robert L. Kroc Professor of Neurology at the Harvard Medical School, director and founder of the Brigham MS Center, and co-director of the Anne Romney Center for Neurological Disease at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And he's also the author of a very interesting new book, The Brain Under Siege. Dr. Weiner, it's a Pleasure to have you join us here today. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Dr. Weiner, one in six people are living with brain diseases like MS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. In The Brain Under Siege, you liken the brain to a crime scene, showing readers how clues point to causes and suggest paths to a cure. That's very visual and very exciting. How do you achieve that? Let's say you see somebody who has uh, Alzheimer's disease, okay? And they're having, they're forgetting things. They don't recognize their family, et cetera. So we know the problem is in the brain. We, we, we wouldn't go uh, do a liver biopsy to find out what goes on. You'd look at the brain to see what's going on. And when you look at the brain, uh, for each of these diseases, you see something wrong. And then when you look at the brain of an Alzheimer's patient, uh, there are three basic things that are wrong. Uh, and then when you try to, ultimately we wanna treat the diseases. So you gotta say, what's wrong? What is the crime scene? And then how do you do research to help it? So one of the main things in the crime scene in Alzheimer's is amyloid. Amyloid is in the brain. And so then there's all the questions. What is amyloid? Where does it come from? Why is it there? Is there a genetic cause for it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another thing in the crime scene in Alzheimer's is a protein called tau, T-A-U. Right. Now, why is that there? Now, we know that the tau comes after the amyloid. And we also know that when you do studies, uh, people with Alzheimer's who have cognitive problems it's related to the tau, not to the amyloid, even though the amyloid comes first. So that raises a whole bunch of questions. When can you target tau? How can you do that? And another third major thing in Alzheimer's are cells in the brain called microglial cells. And these are immune cells in the brain that become activated. So then the question is, well, why do they become activated? Can you measure them? Can you do a brain scan to see them? Can you treat somebody and make it get better? When did they first recognize them? So that's how it that's how it all came together. It came together from seeing a patient with a disease, seeing what's going on in the brain. I came up with the idea of a crime scene because people can understand that. And then they can also say, how do you solve the crime scene? I mean, as a doctor, when I see somebody, when anybody sees a doctor, their big question is, well, I have a disease, how do you cure it? It's sort of like some guy did the murder, how do you solve it? I mean, that's the other side of it. And that's that's what I um, discuss in the brain under siege. And uh, it is a crime against the brain. The brain is under siege. And how do we understand it and protect it? I think it's a great book. It's a fascinating read. And I can't wait for the movie. <laughs> All right, yeah. But Dr. Weiner, what are the, some of the latest technological advances that have um, been discovered uh, to support our loved ones living with uh, brain disorders? Right. Well, the um, there's advances in in helping them, you know, with their symptoms, and then there's advances in coming up with therapy. So, uh, you know, a simple thing: people with ALS who become paralyzed, but their brains are normal. Uh, computer technology, et cetera, it helps them live a more normal life. So, I mean, those are advances that have 
uh, help that symptomatically. Um, from a therapeutic standpoint, a big advance is understanding the immune system and how the immune system is abnormal in these diseases. And uh, one of the cells in the brain that we know a lot more about is called the microglial cell. And that's a major player in the crime scene. And it advances in understanding the microglial cell uh, has allowed us to come up with drugs that target that, that then could help the brain. And another thing that I would mention is advances in imaging, new ways to look at the brain. Uh, one of the big advances in medicine has always been to be able to look inside. Uh, there was a time when we were treating tuberculosis, you didn't have a chest x-ray. You put someone in a sanitarium and said, well, how tired were they? Then you got the chest x-ray, then you could see the, uh, the disease. And finally, another major advance that's being applied to all brain diseases is something called the microbiome. The microbiome are all the bugs in our body and in our guts, we have trillions of bacteria, more than the cells in our body, trillions. And these bacteria can relate to the disease. And so one thing that many people are doing now is trying to understand the bacteria in our gut, how they interact with the brain and how they could be modulated. Now modulating them could be, you know, dietary manipulation, uh, are antibiotics good or bad? Because antibiotics can affect them in the gut. So, so you've got uh, imaging, you've got understanding the immune system, you've got the microbiome. If you wouldn't mind walking us through the book and then letting, letting, letting us know what it, what it is that you'd like us to learn or think about or know once we finish reading it. So there's five diseases, and I'm going to talk about each of the diseases and what we found. So the first disease in the book is multiple sclerosis. And of all the diseases, we have uh, best treatment for multiple sclerosis. And in the crime scene, what we've learned about MS is that MS is caused by cells, immune cells, that go into the brain and attack the uh, myelin covering in the brain. So that's what MS is. It's a T cell attacking. And we've now learned how to tame those T cells uh, with a number of therapies. We have 15 drugs to treat MS. And uh, if I see a young, I saw a young medical student who came down with MS and we have a treatment for that uh, person that we didn't have before. And, but the other thing we learned about MS is that there's two stages. Number one, a relapsing stage where people get better and worse. And we have treatments for that. But th we then have a progressive stage where they just keep getting worse despite our therapies. So for MS, the big um, challenge is understanding progressive MS. And one of the messages in the book is that some of the um, things in one disease affect another, okay? So the second, as we walk through the book, the second disease is called Alzheimer's disease. Right. Everybody knows what Alzheimer's is. Uh, I actually open the chapter with the story of a woman who I bring to the hospital who has Alzheimer's, and it was my mother, okay? So it's a personal story, and how my mother said, well, can't you help me? But, you know, I wasn't able to. And uh, the story of Alzheimer's, is recognizing it and that the amyloid causes it. And that uh, I spoke about this, then that there's tau and that there's microglial activation. And there are trials now of antibodies against amyloid. Some of them didn't get approved by the FDA, but there's more coming. So we should be having drugs for, uh, uh, some drugs for Alzheimer's, which will be one of the first things. Now, another story that I tell is that re, uh, I tell about research in, by the way, in terms of the MS, Ann Romney, who our center is named for her, she has MS and I took care of her. This is public knowledge and she's doing very well. So it's very encouraging to see that. As far as, uh, and when we started the Ann Romney Center, one of the things that Ann and I spoke about 
is a nasal vaccine that I was working on for Alzheimer's. And this is now in clinical trials. We've developed a nasal vaccine uh, where it stimulates the immune system to go into the brain and clear out the amyloid. So that's a very exciting thing for me that we're doing here at the uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. And um, we also have a nasal vaccine that works on the microglial cells. And that could be used not only in MS and Alzheimer's, but also in ALS. So that's something about Alzheimer's. Dennis Selko, who co-directs the Ann Romney Center with me, is a world expert in amyloid and in Alzheimer's disease. The uh, third disease I talk about is ALS, one of the more tragic diseases. Yeah. It affects the mind, Lou Gehrig's disease. Most people live three to five years. And I talk about how the motor neuron is attacked and causes paralysis, does not affect memory. And the various things that we're trying in ALS, there have just been some new drugs proved, which is encouraging, although they're not as effective as we would like them to. In the nasal spray that we're working on Alzheimer's, we're also gonna try for ALS. The fourth disease I talk about is Parkinson's disease. Right. People kind of know what Parkinson's is. They know how people walk with the uh, gait and they shake and everything. Um, but the, and we have drugs to help the symptoms. You know, there's many famous people that have Parkinson's. Michael J. Fox has Parkinson's. Janet Remo had Parkinson's. And we can help some of the symptoms, but we don't affect the underlying cause. And one of the underlying causes of Parkinson's is the deposition of a protein called alpha-synuclein. So we've identified that in the brain. And now there are trials to see what we could do with alpha-synuclein. Now, Parkinson's is interesting because it may relate to the gut. And people who start with Parkinson's sometimes have constipation. The gut's not working well. And there may be a connection between the gut and the brain in Parkinson's, which is interesting. Now, the last disease I talk about is glioblastoma, which is brain tumor. Now that's the opposite of some of the other diseases in a way. And it's, it's one of the worst cancers that we have. And uh, we really don't have good therapy for glioblastoma. And one of the interesting things about the glioblastoma, the brain tumor, now glioblastoma, uh, Joe Biden's son had glioblastoma, Ted Kent, you know, had glioblastoma. And uh, John McCain had glioblastoma. And what happens in a brain tumor in glioblastoma, normally the immune system fights off the cancer, okay? And what happens is that the cancer is very clever. The cancer blocks the immune system from attacking the cancer. So the cancer blocks the immune system uh, from removing the cancer. And one of the big advances in cancer therapy has been ways to relieve that blockage, to relieve the blockage set up by the uh, cancer. And in fact, a Nobel Prize was given for this. Uh, Jimmy Carter is alive because he got one of these, it's called checkpoint inhibitors. It inhibits these checkpoints. And it shows the two sides to things. Number one, that the immune system can be overactive, say in MS, but underactive in the glioblastoma. So when you learn to control it, if you do it in different ways, it can apply to different diseases. So that's a brief tour to the brain under siege. And some of the um, interesting things to me anyway of these diseases. Could you tell me about Abe and Phil's last poker game starring Martin Loudnow and Paul Savino? Uh, Okay, uh, Abe and Phil's Last Poker Game is a, is a movie I made. And everyone says, well, why did you make this movie? I've always been interested in movies. And when I was in medical school, I used to make music videos of Beatles songs. And uh, my son actually went into the entertainment. His name is Ron Weiner. He's an Emmy award-winning comedy writer. He wrote for 30 Rock with Tina Fey. He's now writing with Amy Schumer. And I had written some books and had some ideas. And he said, well, dad, you like movies? Why don't you make one? And so 
I wrote a script uh, called Abe and Phil's Last Poker Game. And I was able to get it funded and I was able to get uh, great actors. Now, what is Abe and Phil's Last Poker Game about? It tells the story of an old Jewish doctor who goes into a nursing home because he can't take care of his wife who has Alzheimer's. So again, I stick, I stay with the theme of doctors and disease, et cetera. And that's played by Martin Landau. Yeah. And in the nursing home, he meets an old Italian guy who was a womanizer and a gambler. Okay. And that's played by Martin, by uh, Paul Sorvino, who sadly just passed away. And they have an improbable friendship. You know, this old Jewish doctor and this Italian gambler and woman, they would have never talked to each other in life. They become friends. And then in the story is a young nurse who's adopted, who uh, hears that her, goes to search for her adoptive parents, hears that her father is in this home. So she takes a job in the home. She meets these two old guys and they both want to be her father. So it's a story of aging. It's a story of disease. It's a story of friendship uh, and searching for roots. And it really came out very well. It was at the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, I met Robert De Niro there. He sent me a nice bottle of champagne for my movie. So I was very um, lucky to make this. I wrote and directed it myself. Everyone says, how in the world could you write and direct the film, you know, well, I, I guess I had the talent. They, they, weren't you afraid? I wasn't afraid. What's the worst could happen? The movie didn't work out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, uh, it's it. But it came out. I don't know if you saw it. It really is a beautiful movie and you can get it on uh, Amazon. You know, it's streaming Abe and Phil's Last Poker Game. So I encourage people to uh, to take a look at it. And I thank you very much for your time and for everything you do. So Gary, thank you very much. And what I'll say to the people who are watching, there is hope and we're working very hard to help all the people who have uh, brain diseases.